someone who eats lentils on a daily basis, about every other week or so. And there are plenty of great reasons as to why I do so, and will share them with you in this video. However, since the emergence of articles and books such as The Plant Paradox and Bulletproof Diet, legumes such as lentils and their lectin content have become somewhat of a major health issue on people's minds, and are oftentimes referred to as the new gluten. In this video, we will break down the advantages and disadvantages of incorporating this legume into our diets to leave you better informed in your decision making. Timestamps will be available in the description and on screen. To begin with, what are lectins? Lectins are a type of protein found naturally in nightshade plant foods such as tomatoes, lentils, peas and legumes, and can also be found within certain dietary products. Lectins are oftentimes referred to as anti-nutrients since they can reduce the body's ability to absorb nutrients. Lectins are thought to have evolved as a natural defense system in plants, similar to a toxin that deters small animals or insects from eating the plant. Castor beans contain so much lectin that they are toxic to most organisms. So much so that humans weaponized this extract called ricin against other humans, which sadly led to the death of outspoken Bulgarian dissident Georgi Markov, who was stabbed in the leg with an umbrella by an unknown foreign man. Within three days, he was dead. It was found that the tip of the umbrella held a minuscule metal sphere containing a pellet of ricin that remained in the wound and killed him. Despite not being as toxic as ricin, humans are unable to digest most plant lectins, which may cause stomach issues when these plant foods are eaten uncooked. Take care, raw vegans. Lectins are also the reason why it can be dangerous to eat undercooked legumes, which have the highest lectin content of most plant foods. Lectins are so effective that crops are genetically modified to express higher concentrations to better ward off pests. While lectins are ancient molecules that surely evolved as defense to insects and various pathogens, it turns out humans aren't immune to their damaging effects either. The harmful aspects of lectin mainly lie in their modus operandi, their mode of operating. Lectins are a class of molecule known as glycoproteins, which are essentially proteins that have carbohydrate groups attached to the polypeptide chain, which are basically a strand of interconnected amino acids. When these bulky molecules are ingested, they stick to the gut lining and disrupt the gut's ability to act as a gatekeeper. The lectin glycoprotein molecules then cause mischief by blocking vitamins and nutrients from getting access through the wall to the bloodstream inside. Lectin then proceeds to prior part cells in the gut lining, creating a breach large enough for the bulky molecule to enter. However, the bigger issue here is that this is not the only molecule which will gain access to the inside of the gut. Other larger molecules and some bacteria and toxins can pass through this breach to your bloodstream and wreak havoc within. This process triggers our bodies to send in the cavalry by means of the immune system. This condition is known as leaky gut syndrome. As a review article published in the Toxicon Journal states that danger of lectins include disrupting lipids, carbohydrates and protein metabolism, promoting enlargement and or atrophy of key internal organs and tissues, and alter the immunal and immunological status. At high intakes, lectins can seriously threaten the growth and health of consuming animals. If this hasn't already put you off, or at the very least, made you somewhat wary of this little known glycoprotein molecule, there is more to come. Once inside the gut lining and the bloodstream, the white blood cells label them for destruction as antigens, which is a scientific way of saying foreign body. However, these sticky glycoprotein molecules have more tricks up their sleeve. They can latch onto other carbohydrate, glycolipid, or glycoprotein molecules in our body, causing some of our own cells to be destroyed in the process. This can be particularly problematic if they manage to hook on to some of our vital cells, for example, those located in the brain. Lectins are also known for their ability to clump cells together. For example, when lectins are swimming in the bloodstream, they can clump blood cells together by a process known as agglutination. The body then has no choice but to dispose of these clumped up cells, which may unfortunately result in adverse effects like anemia. 
So why on earth would anyone want to even touch, let alone eat, these types of food, I hear you say? While the human population has existed for centuries, feeding on these legumes without becoming extinct. So it stands to reason that our bodies have some sort of defence regarding these types of food, right? Let's dive into a few of these defences. Stomach acid is a principal form of defence our bodies utilise against pathogens and toxins we inevitably ingest alongside our food and drink. In many cases, your stomach acid can digest certain lectins, but unfortunately, it can't get to them all. It is, however, an essential defence that at least eases the burden of lectin digestion. Another unlikely ally in our battle against lectin is our gut microbiome. The gut is full of microorganisms which have evolved to thoroughly consume many kinds of lectins. These bacteria provide excellent protection as they eliminate many lectins before they can reach the wall of your gut and wreak havoc. If lectins do somehow manage to latch onto the gut lining and cause disruption, the cells have the ability to release a protective layer of mucus to deal with the issue, as stated in the research article, Disruption-Induced Mucosecretion Repram Protection. More importantly, the most efficient way to deal with the harmful effects of lectin remain outside the body. Lectin's anti-nutritional properties with legumes can be somewhat neutralized by heating for one hour at 95 degrees Celsius, which is 203 degrees Fahrenheit for our folk across the pond, and for only 10 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This causes the protein molecule to become denatured, which means some of the weaker bonds holding the molecules together break apart, causing the protein to lose its shape and function, as well as its potency. So now we've discussed the harmful aspects of lectins, let's take a look at the benefits of eating lentils as a whole food and see whether they stand any chance of counteracting the bad. Firstly, lentils are a very good source of cholesterol-lowering fibre. In 2001, a research article highlighted that after monitoring 9,632 men and women in America for 19 years, a significant inverse relationship between legume intake and risk of coronary heart disease suggested that increasing legume intake may be an important part of a dietary approach to the primary prevention of coronary heart disease in the general population. Not only do lentils help lower cholesterol, they are of benefit in managing blood sugar disorders since their fantastically high fibre content prevents blood sugar levels from rising rapidly after a meal. This coincides with New York best-selling book by Dan Butner, who illustrates that longevity blue zones, these are areas in the world where people may live up to and over 100 years of age, all have the consumption of legumes in common. These regions include Loma Linda in the USA, Okinawa in Japan, and Sardinia in Italy. So legumes, the most lectin-lush food types in the world, have a greater correlation with longevity rather than mortality. But this is not all legumes and lentils have to offer. Lentils are a great source of protein for vegans and vegetarians. Lentils are also naturally gluten-free, which makes them a staple for people with celiac disease. Legumes are naturally powerful antioxidants which means they can take care of the harmful free radicals in our bodies. Can you guess which legume out of these 10 has the most powerful antioxidant capabilities? That's right, it's our favourite legume lentils coming in strong with a total antioxidant capability of 721. Lentils' contribution to heart health lies not just in their fibre content, but in the significant amounts of folate and magnesium they provide. Folate functions by lowering levels of homocysteine, which is an amino acid that is an intermediate product in an important metabolic process called the methylation cycle. When folate, as well as vitamin B6, are present, homocysteine is immediately converted into cysteine and methionine, both which are benign. When these B vitamins are not available, levels of homocysteine increase in the bloodstream. This causes a problem as homocysteine molecules damage artery walls and are considered a potent risk factor for heart disease. Lentils magnesium puts yet another plus in the column of its beneficial cardiovascular effects. Magnesium is nature's own calcium channel blocker which the body uses to repair damaged walls of our circulatory system and heart. When enough magnesium is around, 
Veins and arteries breathe a sigh of relief and relax, which lessens resistance and improves the flow of blood, oxygen and nutrients throughout the body. Studies show that a deficiency of magnesium is not only associated with heart attack, but that immediately following a heart attack, lack of sufficient magnesium promotes free radical injury to the heart. Want to literally keep your heart happy? Eat lentils. Now that we have discussed most of the major advantages and disadvantages of consuming legumes, we can now come to an educated decision on whether to incorporate these unassuming seed-like foods into our diet. On the one hand, their high lectin content can disrupt lipid, carbohydrate and protein metabolism, promote enlargement and or atrophy of key internal organs and tissues, and alter the hormonal and immunological status. At high intakes, lectins can seriously threaten the growth and health of consuming animals. However, this effect mainly comes into play if the legume is undercooked or eaten raw. When correctly cooked, the health benefits are quite extraordinary and include cholesterol lowering fiber, helping to maintain blood glucose concentrations after a meal as a low glycemic index food, working as a powerful antioxidant, as well as the numerous benefits their high folate and magnesium concentrations provide. Comment below and let me know what you decide to do with this information. Don't forget to rate the video with a like or a dislike and subscribe for future information.